I'm Dr. Michael Natola. And I'm Megan Strong. In this week's Case of the Week, my dental assistant shares the three things she can't live without, and I don't make that list. Mm. And a Pennsylvania man gets some Missy D's over teeth whitening Miss, strips. Missy D's? Misdemeanors. Oh, got it. And a company launches a toothpaste just for men. Ironically, not called just for men. <laughs> that and more on today's Chairside Live. What is up? Hello and welcome to episode 91 of Chairside Live. 91, a 91. number that inspires fear in every Southern California resident because there's a 91 freeway. It's always like a parking lot. No one wants to get on it. Yeah. Just the sound of the 91. I'm starting to sweat. I'm yeah, starting to break out in a cold sweat. Honestly, it is one of the worst highways, freeways around. It is so, so bad. And the worst is when you pay to go in the toll road. Right. So you pay your $9 during oh, peak insane. hours. Uh -huh. First of all, you should not be able to get a ticket. If you're paying $9 you. to drive in those lanes, you should be able to go 180, like if my speedometer want. says. Second of all, there's times where there's traffic is backed up in that lane. And right. that's particularly galling because you don't get a refund if nope. you're moving slower than the actual traffic yep. lanes are. So it's anyway, I got my 91 frustration out. How are you? I'm doing well. Today I'm 22 weeks pregnant. Wow. So I'm, I'm more than halfway there and uh, feeling good. good. So yeah. Glad to hear it. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I had a little uh, accident on my bike this weekend. So if you see me Did? lean forward like this and begin to cry, you'll know why. I yeah, think it's my pretty forearm... crazy. I have to say that this puts any of my previous mountain biking injuries to shame. Right, and I had this done to me by a right. woman, a stranger. I wouldn't really admit that, probably. Well, she it's better than falling on my own. Oh. She shoved me over. It was okay. in Corona Del Mar on PCH at 1 in the afternoon. I'm lucky to be alive. For, fortunately, I fell towards the curb and not into traffic. So, <laughs> But if you see me lean forward and, and it looks like, you know, I'm sucking a breath and then start to cry the single tear like the Indian on the side of the road, you'll know. You'll know why it is. It's oh not because gosh. of litter. Well, we got a great uh, episode for you today. And for the case of the week, we actually had a letter come in from a dental assistant who wanted to know what my dental assistant's three favorite products were, three products that she couldn't live without. And so since I really didn't see any interesting cases on the lab floor this week, I decided let's go ahead and grab some of these products from my dental assistant and find out the three products she can't live without. And just because I'm a total narcissist, I had to throw in three of my own products thinking that people wanted to see those as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. For this week's case of the week, I walked around the lab and as you can see here, there's there's nothing. I didn't find any case that really fascinated me or I thought that was uh, uh, super interesting. And so uh, we just happened to get a letter from a dental assistant too. And the dental assistant said, what are your dental assistant's top products that she can't live without? So I had her kind of narrow it down to three. And uh, I thought I would share those with you guys today. And of course, not to be outdone, I had to grab three of my own while I was in the operatory. So. Uh, one of the top three for uh, my dental assistants that she can't live without is Thornton's 3-in-1 uh, floss for cleaning up uh, temporary cement. And uh, I think probably most dentists have seen this. There's a variation on this product that I'll take out in a second too, which may be one that you haven't seen before. But the 3-in-1 floss is the classic uh, dental floss, floss threader. And then, um, you know, I call it kind of a caterpillar. So here's the floss. It's not glide floss by any stretch of the imagination, but it'll do for when you're cleaning things up. It's not the kind of floss I'd want to use at home, you know, on a daily basis. And then it's got the floss threader on the other end. It's not the strongest, you know, of floss threaders. It's a little bit wimpy. Certainly it's more stiff uh, than the regular dental floss on here. And it's, it's got a little body to it, but not much. And then really for me, the money part, um, of this floss is this soft, you know, caterpillar pipe cleaner material, whatever you want to call it. You know, run through gingival embrasures. This is probably the best way to be able to uh, get temporary cement that's stuck in the gingival embrasure or maybe stuck subgingivally to get it out. And so running this part of it through there is absolutely fantastic when it comes to cleaning up. Even after like uh, no prep veneers, when there's just little chunks of resin cement there, I love uh, to run this through and just watch all the things that it grabs onto. It's not so much that it's sticky or kind of a Velcro-y consistency. It just has uh, dimension. It just takes up some space. And as a result, uh, when you pull it through, it works well. The, the one that you may not have seen is the Thornton Bridge and Implant. So again, that was the three-in-one floss. And then the Bridge and Implant's a little bit different. This is actually one that we do give to patients with bridges uh, and implants because it works very well for them. And as we take this one out, You'll notice that it's got a thicker 
caterpillar or a thicker pipe cleaner or whatever you want to kind of call that. So it's really designed to um, work. And then both ends are a much more substantial uh, floss threader. So I've gone to using this for my cleanup uh, in almost all situations because this one is nice and stiff now. So as we go to put that uh, in approximately, we stand a pretty good chance of not having to use a bridge threader and we can get that in and slide it through and then be able to use this to clean up the material. And it's got that on both ends. Um, and so it's got this nice stiff uh, area on both ends. It doesn't have the regular dental floss end, but look at, there's the, there's the floss thread uh, end on the three and one floss. And you can see it's just kind of thin and wimpy and not nearly as stiff as that one. And then the other end of the three and one has the floss, which like I said, it's not great floss. I'd rather use glide if I'm going through contacts and trying to get some bonding agent off in between there. So my assistant actually likes the three-in-one floss a little bit better. Again, you can see the dimension of the two cleaning surfaces of the two and why I like this one. It's more aggressive, but it's hard to call it aggressive when it's absolutely soft like it is. So she likes the three-in-one a little bit better for whatever reason. I would rather use Glide uh, in conjunction with this to be able to clean out that cement. So that's the Thornton uh, three-in-one floss and the bridge and implant uh, in interdental cleanings. That's one of her top three. Her second one is a temporary cement, as you may guess. This is something that she uses uh, a heck of a lot more than I do, and this is from Premier Dental. This is their next temp temporary cement, and uh, it's non-eugenol, um, which is nice, although if you listen to Gordon Christensen, he'll tell you that two weeks, if it's on for two weeks, all the eugenol is gone anyway, so you don't need to worry about it interfering with resin cements. Uh, but it has fluoride, uh, which is fine, um, although I tend to think fluoride sometimes is a little bit overrated. But here's two things I really love, potassium nitrate, which is fantastic uh, for desensitizing teeth. And actually, in a high enough concentration, you get up to like 30% potassium nitrate, you can actually get... Um, some hard tissue uh, anesthesia, believe it or not. I've been reading some reports, doing a lot, some research on potassium nitrate, looking at topical applications of it to use as a topical for very small hard tissue applications and chlorhexidine, so we're going to be killing bacteria uh, at the same time. And since we know temporaries have a tendency to leak and the margins may not be perfect, that is a great uh, combination of ingredients to have in a temporary cement, which she loves. My one warning with this, I remember re-cementing something when she was doing something else. Um, because it's a uh, resin temporary cement, it sets very strong and you don't lose uh, many temporaries at all, if any. And it goes through a gel state where it's easy to clean up. But if you walk away from this like you might a standard temporary cement and come back to clean it off thinking that you're just going to be able to take your Explorer and peel it off, that's not true because of the fact that it's a resin temporary cement. So you want to make sure that you clean it off during its gel stage before it gets, it doesn't get rock hard like a regular resin cement, but it gets hard enough, certainly harder than a regular temporary cement. So that is the one thing, that's the, the trade-off for not having temporaries fall off is you need to sit there with it and check it and make sure you clean it off before it gets hard or it will be one of the harder temporary cements to uh, clean off uh, before you let the patient go. Um, it comes off clean when you remove the temporaries at the next appointment. So that is her number, uh, one of her three products, I guess number two. And the other one is one that um, I never use, and that's this Garmer's cotton roll holder. I don't know if you've seen one of these before. It's, um, I always laugh because it reminds me of a medieval torture device. <laughs> you look at it and you go, uh, Really? Where, what exa where exactly is that going to go? And really, I don't have any use uh, for something like this because I refuse to work alone. If I'm ever uh, doing anything, including just giving an injection at the chair alone and there's not at least one assistant with me, um, they know I'm angry. That's, you know, this, that I'm not happy about sitting there alone at any time um, for any reason. But my assistant, on the other hand, uh, has a different constitution than me and a lot of times gets stuck working alone, whether it's cementing temporaries. She actually does digital photography on her own, might do sealants on her own. So this cotton roll holder, the cotton rolls just kind of slide onto these little prongs that you see right here. And we'll just slide that on. She's tried every possible cotton roll holder you can imagine before she settled on this one. And then as you might imagine, um, this goes down around the patient's teeth. And there's ones that do that with a little clip over the top like this. But the key that makes this work is the fact that this goes underneath the patient's chin and holds it in place. And actually, I'll, I'll show you a picture in just a second what this looks like on a Typodont. But this helps lock it in underneath the patient's chin so that even if their tongue swallows and hits this roll, 
or hits part of it, it won't lift it up and knock it off like it can uh, with some other ones. So the patient doesn't necessarily see this part of it. Uh, it really is nothing uh, anywhere near a, a torture device, even though I said it looks like something that uh, you can imagine from the 1930s that you clamp onto the patient's face. But if you're working uh, alone, putting on temporary, something where you need some moisture control, you can definitely see where having two cotton rolls held in place with this underneath the patient's chin uh, would be of, of great use if you don't have something like a, an isolite or an iso dry. Uh, a great way to be able to do it, and uh, she tells me that the feature that goes under the chin is what helps lock it in place and really hold it down. So again, that's a, a Garmers, G-A-R-M-E-R-S uh, cotton roll holder, and this happens to be the medium size uh, for an adult. So um, not to be outdone, I wanted to bring three of the products that I feel like I can't live without, or three of my top ones. And this is one that we don't talk about all that often. This is a burr, and we've seen lots of different burrs. This one is... Uh, colloquially kind of called the mosquito burr. You can see that tip. Its real name is a, a 392-016F. So 392 being the shape, 016 being the widest diameter, and the F being uh, fine grit. And you can see that red stripe, which tells you that the average diamond particle size on this burr is right around 60 microns. And this is a burr that I use um, anytime we need to open up space between teeth. So if I'm preparing crowns and I break the contacts, let's say between tooth eight and nine, and I can't get retraction cord in, I will take this little tip down in between uh, the two areas and open it up. Sometimes if I'm dropping a proximal box, I still have contact with the adjacent tooth. That's where I'm gonna use this. You can use it around margins. You can use it to finish restorative materials. It's pretty much a nice little uh, pointy diamond that's gonna be used primarily on two structure. If I'm using it on composite, we have other uh, carbide burrs that we could use instead. Although with the, the fine grit on here, it does a pretty darn good job of, of leaving a much smoother surface than other diamonds were. So this 392016F Mosquito Diamond, it's not the kind of thing you're gonna use every day and you may not even use it once a week, but when you need something like this, you need this and this will bail you out of lots of uh, Lots of areas where you wonder how else you're going to get some separation between those teeth. Something else I have to put on the list just because of the fact that it's almost made uh, post-operative sensitivity obsolete for us is uh, the G5 all-purpose desensitizer. This happens to be from Clinician's Choice. And these are combinations of uh, glutaraldehyde and HEMA. The HEMA helps draw the glutaraldehyde down into the dentinal tubules. The original version of this uh, was Gluma, which is still available, but when you look at it on a milliliter per milliliter basis or cost per milliliter basis, it's the most expensive one out there. Uh, this one's probably the second cheapest. There's also MicroPrime from Danville Engineering. Uh, I just, I like Clinician's Choice products, so I go with the G5 um, because it's roughly the same price. And um, we do what Rella Christensen suggested, I don't know, I probably heard her say it seven or eight years ago at a lecture which is a one minute application of this prior to cementation. So one minute uh, on the prep itself, wait for 60 seconds, air thin it, and then a second application of the G5, wait 60 seconds, air thin it, and then go to cementation with whatever material you're using. It actually slightly increases the bond strength of resin modified glass ionomers uh, to the tooth. But the more important thing is the glutaraldehyde acts as a fixer and basically fixes, just kind of plasticizes that outer layer of dentin. And I think it's one of the reasons why um, we don't have the post-operative sensitivity that we used to see. Um, Rella says that two coats of this, two one-minute coats, will kill 99.9% .9 of the bacteria on the tooth. So that's probably a good thing as far as preventing uh, further endo. But I, I love this idea. And sometimes we're even doing this at the temporary appointment as well. Before the temporary goes on, I'll see my assistant putting this on. And I think that those happen to be the bigger percentage of the teeth where we can wiggle the temps off to do the crown try-in without having to give them anesthesia because we've already placed this fixer, the glutaraldehyde hema mixture, onto the tooth for the two one-minute applications. So that uh, has just become a standard uh, part of our protocol. You can use it under direct composites. You know, you can use it uh, really anytime you want. Anytime you want to desensitize uh, something, you can put this down um, onto the dentin knowing that uh, you're going to get uh, a nice fixed layer of dentin on the outside, a little coat of armor almost by, um, by going in with that glutaraldehyde and fixing the tissue. And then my last one would be um, just my striving to do pain-free dentistry whenever possible. This is the PFG Light. 
uh, material. It's the 5% lidocaine, 5% prilocaine, and uh, 2% uh, uh, tetracaine. And uh, we use this, the light version uh, of the PFG, anytime we're using it on a mucous membrane. So for example, as a pre-injection topical uh, in a mucosa or before a lower block or something like that, we use the full strength version, which is 10% lidocaine, 10% prilocaine, and 4% tetracaine on fixed tissue. If I'm using a diode laser, or if um, I need to anesthetize some palatal tissue to do an extraction, we'll use that. But we use the half strength on the mucous membrane because of the fact that um, it uh, absorbs so much better through the mucous membrane, and obviously we want to use the least amount of uh, medication that we can to get the desired result. I just didn't get the desired result with standard topicals. People could still feel the needle going in. So you can order it uh, as the 10 ml syringe like this, and then we put it into an Ultradent uh, syringe to use for patients. That's probably a little more expensive way to be able to do it. They sell it in a bulk um, 30 uh, gram tube where you can just squirt a little out onto a pad and then stick a cotton tip applicator in there uh, as well. That's probably the more efficient and more economical way uh, to do it. And that's from uh, Stevens Pharmacy there in uh, uh, Costa Mesa, California, not too far away from here. And I think you can find them on the internet like at stevensrx.com. Uh, but uh, this has allowed me to be able to give uh, as close to a painless injection as I can give. And I really feel that if I can earn the patient's trust by doing that, um, then I can be as painful as I want after they're anesthetized and they won't even know it and I won't know it uh, either. So uh, those are three of my uh, assistant's favorite products and three of my favorite products that uh, we'll uh, briefly put out there, the Mosquito Burr, the 392016, my two, and then her next temp, Temporary Cement, Bridge and Implant 3-in-1 Floss, and the Garmers Cotton Roll Holder. So the list probably goes longer. We'll probably um, add some to that. And I'd like to hear from you guys about the things that uh, you can't uh, practice without or wouldn't want to practice without because uh, th that's the way I've learned about things like this. This was from Rella. This was from a dentist in Indiana. This was from David Hornbrook. You know, that's sometimes you do discover things on your own, but most of the time it's hearing it from... Uh, uh, from other dentists and you find something and go, wow, I love that. I'm glad I found out about it. So please send in a, maybe your top three things that you can't live without. Thank you for that, Dr. D. You're welcome. And thanks also to my super assistant, RDAEF, Jennifer. Yes. And now let's go to a segment we like to call Viewer Mail. This week's viewer mail comes to us from Dr. Scott Molman from Las Vegas, Nevada, and he writes in actually with an actual letter that came in the mail. It was not electronically delivered. No. He licked an envelope, stuck a he did. stamp on it. In hand, and signed it with real ink. I forgot you could still do that. I know. It's incredible. So thank you very much for bringing it back. But he writes, Dear Dr. Natola and Megan, congratulations to Megan and Dr. D for your recent announcements. This is very exciting news. Thank you for the information in your Chairside Live programs. I have watched every episode so far and have found the information valuable. On a previous show, you showed a full arch impression tray that was adjustable from narrow width to wider. What is the name of the tray and where can it be purchased? Thank you for your help. Well, Scott, hey, what street does Scott live on? I glanced at the letter before. Soaring goals. Soaring goals in How Las Vegas. How many seagulls are in Las Vegas? Did you ever read Jonathan Livingston Seagull? You're way too young to even nope, know what that is. That's what, I, that's what I thought of when I saw Soaring Goals. But what a majestic sounding name. We have some places in Southern California that sound better than they are. Good example, Hawaiian Gardens. <laughs> you never want to be caught dead in Hawaiian Gardens. And it looks neither like Hawaii or a garden. Uh. It's remarkable that you can just decide decide to name it right. something regardless of what it's like. Well, Scott, you ask a question, and you asked about something. I, I give you this news, um, and I know it's kind of bittersweet, but you asked about the uh, co-adjust-a-tray. So the good news is I know exactly what you're talking about. The bad news is they don't make it anymore. And it was kind of a niche product for them. We loved it because um, if you do a lot of things like occlusal guards, which we do, or snoring appliances, or anything where you're going to need full arch alginate impressions, for example, it's fantastic because once you snap the two units together, you are able to adjust it, as you mentioned, from 
something being very narrow to something being very wide and everything in between, a couple of medium settings as well. And so rather than trying in a metal tray, ooh, that's the wrong one, try in another one that's a little tight, there's the right one. Those two trays should kind of sort of be sterilized in one fashion or another since they've been in the patient's mouth. But that never happens with the uh, adjuster tray because one size literally fits all and you can go from the narrow and just pick it up and move it to the wider. Uh, there's been talk that they're looking for another manufacturer, the dentist who has the patent on this tray. Uh, at one point there was talk that we might even make a, uh, a tray like this, or, or this one in particular now that we have some injection molding capabilities, but that's still kind of all up in the air and I'm not exactly sure where it's going to end. It came in a upper and a lower tray. In fact, we would use these sometimes for palateless impressions, the lower trays if we didn't need the palate, like for a bleaching tray or an occlusal guard to make it more comfortable. You can actually bend the wings on the side of it. And so if there's too much coverage or it's impinging in the vestibule, you can bend it and take it off. Really well thought out, uh, really well designed product that unfortunately uh, is not currently available anymore. It reminds me of another product. This one is probably the product that I get the most questions about at any given time. And that is the retractors that we use in our clinical videos. And these are the Seymour retractors, uh, which for many, many years were available from uh, Discus Dental. And I don't know how many dentists were ordering it, but apparently not enough for them continue to, whether it was upgrade the mold or whatever they had to do. But these are still my favorite retractors. They do an excellent job, not only at lateral retraction, uh, but at vertical retraction too. So we started using these because of the fact that we videotape all the procedures we do, just in case it turns out to be a good teaching case. And we never really found something that was uh, as adequate as these Seymour retractors. Once I got used to working with them, now I really can't work without them. It's almost like a fifth hand, the way it kind of pulls everything out of the way. And so dentists often write and ask about these, and the only reason we still have these is when I heard the rumor that they were getting ready to stop selling these, we ordered uh, cases, and I mean, you know, a couple hundred, so we wouldn't run out anytime soon. But unfortunately, this is another one of those great items that's not available. However, because you wrote in, and you asked, and you used an actual piece of paper with some ink, and I'm going to send you and included you. Thank I'm going to penalize you for that. No, I'm no. going to send you three of the Seymour retractors Ooh. in one box and one tray each. <laughs> An upper <laughs> and a lower because we don't have that many of these. Um, so you're going to need to conserve these. Make sure you get them back from your lab. Probably want to cold sterile it. They're actually plastic. Good luck prying all the alginate uh, out of the little holes and things. But um, it would be interesting to you know, find out. I don't know what the sales numbers were. Uh, it'd be fun to find another dentist who wanted to invest uh, in a mold or make them. And there is a dentist. We're just not sure we want to make these exact trays. I don't know. I'm not even in on these discussions to tell you the truth. But anyway, I'm going to send these out to you along with a Bruxer polishing kit, something a little that is available in case you like it and use mm -hmm. it. So we will be sending these uh, out to you, Scott. And if nothing else, you can leave them hanging about your desk to remind yourself of how good it used to be in the old days. And how much you love our show. And how much you love the show. Thanks so much for writing in and thanks for those kind words and we will be sure to get these right out to you, Scott. You're thanks forgetting again. something though. What? One little thing. Known as? It wouldn't be a complete package without the famous photo that you and I will sign. We will. I feel like he, these are going to mean Listen, a little more to him. Okay. But he has um, seen every episode, so you're right. He has, okay. and he started off the letter with congratulatory. That's right. For right? both of us, exactly. Thank so. you. So, and on any, including my name, I appreciate that. I am part of this show. And um, you're not the only star here, Dr. D. And so I feel like this is a great. <laughs> I don't recall saying I was, but okay. Well, anyways. <laughs> if you want to start fielding dental questions, you'll get a lot more. I like that pose, by the way. Yep, I'm not sure what's happening. You're about to sneeze or tell me to go to hell. One of the two. Okay. I can't tell which one. I believe it. All right. Thank you, Scott. Any news? Yes. Here's a first. A new toothpaste just for men. Unilever is launching the toothpaste called White Now Men, a whitening formula targeted towards men. It's, a widely, it's already widely available in France and is set to be offered in other markets this year. The toothpaste is based on Unilever's blue light technology, offering instant, temporary whiteness through an optical effect where a blue pigment in the toothpaste neutralizes discoloration. They decided to target men after a study of 480 men revealed that 50% of men use their own toothpaste, while 29% shared with their family, and one-fourth of men would be interested in toothpaste just for them. Uh... 
First of all, the name. I'm into bro paste. Oh, I'm into the bro paste. I think that's, uh, or man paste, or, uh, oh, but I don't, the, I don't understand. I know you told me why they're marketing to men, but I still don't understand. Women want, white now women, and it sounds like you're saying it with a lisp, you know, white right. now men instead right. of right now men. Uh, but white now, um, here's what we need to do. Right. Uh, it just seems like, well, 50% of men buy their own toothpaste. Big whoop. Don't like 90% of women buy their own toothpaste? Right. And they were saying in the story, which was not included in this, that they were, that men, um, due to their social habits, whether it be drinking or smoking or whatever, drinking coffee too, that they have more stains than women, which, first of all, I'm not sure if that's true, but whatever. Um, and so they thought that it would be smart to go after men. Um, and they also did a study where they were saying that they, the smile is the first thing that people look at, and so men want their smile to be good to attract women, of course. Oh, well, that's how they should market it then. Right, but really... It should be called Get Chicks Now instead of White Now Men. The name I can't handle. White Now Men? <laughs> white Now Men. Right. Yeah, I feel like uh, it needs to have creatine or something that's going <laughs> to build muscles at the same time. or Right. Uh, a Viagra tie-in oh, or some, wow. some additional effect where... Men would go, hey, because when you look at the products that men traditionally buy, uh, very few of them are like loofahs or special soaps right. or shampoos. So sure. I don't know. I We'll see if it works or not. Okay. I don't know. I'm going to get me a tube, though. Fly to France and get one. It should be here in the, in the year, so. Maybe it'll work in France. I, I can't see it working in America, but. Yeah, I know. I don't think so. You never know. Anything else? Yes. A Pennsylvania man has been charged with shoplifting teeth whitening strips from a grocery store then reselling them to a second-hand shop. Reports say that the 39-year-old man stole the whiteners and resold them on five different occasions. Police seized 21 boxes of the whitening strips, which retail for between $25 and $60. The suspect has three previous retail theft convictions, making the current charges against him misdemeanors. Now, when you started that story and you were talking about this guy stealing bleaching kits, I was going to say he's a... Good candidate for that new toothpaste, white, men. white men only, or whatever you called it, and and that you know he, but he, what he's doing is buying it, and then he's going to like a ninety-nine cent store kind and of place, it. and and reselling it to them. You think that that store would go? Um, this guy just pulled up in a late model Chevy Nova, right. and he's got only three of these, and they're in a brown paper bag. Right, and his what teeth are, are anything chances? but white. Yeah, what are the chances this is going to be kind of good product? Yeah. And uh, But it's interesting because he must have felt that like that was the easiest, I guess, thing to steal for the highest resale yeah, value. But yeah. if he really wanted to um, make a living doing this, he should have gone after like the men's razor blades. Those like the Gillette are Fusion, so expensive. where they lock here in Los Angeles. I don't know if this is true in the rest of the country. They lock them up. They do. You have to press a button uh-huh. and wait for somebody from CBS to come over and unlock these. Like you're ordering yep. gold bars or right. something like that. And it's such uh, such a pain to wait for that and get them get this you know highly uh, valued material. Right. I would think that he would be stealing those and reselling them, but it's kind of neat that it's tooth bleaching, I guess. I just didn't know. I don't think 99 cent store when I go, you know, my teeth are a little dark. Right. So, but this is the thing that are like. He's already had retail theft convictions right. before. Is this really worth the Missy D's? He's got misdemeanors now on he's working with. Like. Yeah, he's not that good at it is, is the bottom line. Yeah. You know, take a hint. Uh, his uh, high school uh, vocational uh, guy should have helped him out a little it's bit better. He's just not cut back. out to be a thief. Nope. He might need to turn it into something more honest or... Uh, Let's hope. I don't know what. Be a dental assistant. You can whiten people's hope. teeth that way. <laughs> Get paid money for taking impressions. I like it. All right. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate that. That about wraps it up for this edition of Chairside Live. On behalf of myself, Megan, and everybody here at the lab, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry. We'll see you next time. I'll try to stop talking and open my mouth at the same time you cough, and then I'll say, excuse me. <coughs> All right, let's roll. i got to go to the bathroom. Start to get my knees together. Okay, don't do that. Like a little kid. Do you need to I don't have, No. You need to no. It kind of looks like you need to go. <laughs> Why don't you go real quick? Uh, I don't have to. Two minutes later, once you leave. We're only driving to Vegas. I gotta go. And what they say? It's the baby. Hold on. Oh. Mark. I'm into bro paste. Okay. I'm into the bro paste.